Hello, welcome back to Venus Sushi Life Noting. In this episode, I'm gonna share with you uh, my study of this uh, interoperability between Blender and Magica Foxel. So while researching, I actually found this um, this old script by Mate Steinfort. Um, it's called Import Vox. Vox is a file format for Magica Foxel, of course, and this is a uh, from this uh, GitHub, there is a uh, import fox.py, which is a Python script, which is basically, uh, it works for Cinema 4D to import the Foxel um, uh, file format, and it's gonna generate, probably gonna generate cube or box uh, inside Cinema 4D, all with a nicely uh, given materials uh, based on the, the palette file <coughs> of the fox. And so I look at the I look at the script, and so it looks like this. It's only nine, 99 lines, and then lots of them actually um, kind of uh, for Cinema 4D, which is I I kind of modify it to work in in Blender. So, um, but this is more like a like a progress. Uh, it, ideally, I really want to turn it into some kind of a, like a notes notes based kind of solutions. So I'll give you this is like the note based solutions. Uh, with these solutions, we can really like uh, dig down into uh, a folder with lots of box file, and then I can just switch uh, uh, one one by one, you know, into the box. Uh, this is actually basically looking at uh, a folder in my in my hard drive. Um, these box files, and currently I have one, two, three, four, five, and let me get rid of some others file so one two three four five six i have six files um if i try to make like a, a new uh new voxel kind of artwork here let me quickly do that let's make something the thing about voxel is that it's very very easy kind of to think about it because it's just like a 3d pixel um, very easy to do and then once we have this I'm gonna save it as save it as a vault so I'll save it into the this folder test E so now it's safe and then I go back here and then reload the script and we should have test E but you can see there's something funky here um, I'm still kind of figure out why this is like giving the wrong result um, my I think it's uh, it's because of the the different vox file. If I save it from here, it's giving it different result. If I export it out properly, like uh, using this uh, vox exporter, this will actually work. If I reload, and then there you go. See, this is the the same result that you can actually see from here. And this is here. I, I'm actually using a uh, stretch of uh, nodes, and with stretch of nodes, really, I can, I can adjust uh, what's the instance of every voxel, things like that. So this is the kind of like the ultimate um, vox reader in a way. I, it's not like a single node to generate this yet. Maybe one day, but I'm actually using a script node light. So this node is actually. Uh, doing the job is reading um, based on based on the script by what's his name by Mate Steinfort. So, um, but one thing I, I want to show you. Uh, so this is like uh, the notes version, right? This is the note version, and I actually have another one. Um, yeah, this is the other one. I'll show you how actually I started. So I have a bunch of script here and I'm gonna show it to you from the beginning. So I got this Vox Cinema 4D importer. So this is the original by uh, uh, by Stanford. And I reduce it. I actually modify it for Blender. I think I update it as well uh, for Python 3, I think. So this one is my version. Basically it's still, um, so we provide some kind of path so this is the path into one of the my vox file and then there's this uh, definition to import the vox based on the path what interesting is here um, I look at the sc original script and then I 
look at this and then this line actually open up the file and then it reads the bytes the bytes code of the file and it goes inside the file and then start to read it read the material list and then there's kind of like a seek it goes into the bytes and reading all the data and if i'm not wrong if i if i run the script now it's gonna do something for me okay there you go so so that's a, another way you can do this you know it can be of course like a, an io like a file format io for blender that's actually pretty good like ideally you want to have io for vox that will generate a, a voxel like this this one you can see it's a each one of them is a separate uh, vox we can move it you know it could be a uh, pretty large if we if you are doing it this way but it's uh, some people prefer it this way you're gonna have like thousands or ten thousand of voxel even a hundred thousand and that can be quite heavy for blender so be, keep that in mind be careful but other than that this is a uh, quite quite fun way to do it so this is the python script mode you know like you just load the script and run the script providing um, the correct path to the file that's one way you can approach it but there's also the second way to do it which is um, based on the by printing out the actual voxel data and this voxel data is basically xyz position and the last number is actually the index of the palette for a this is for the coloring you know uh, with vox uh, magica voxel actually provide you this kind of uh, palette it's a 255 if i'm not wrong or 256 color um, that you can easily replace with a png and this is very cool uh, definitely cool way to think about um, data so yeah like i said this my my script here actually um, import um, the vox file format and then generate the cubes at the same time it's also printing out all this uh, data so you can see all this uh, vox file uh, all it's uh, each voxel box that uh, we need to generate this is xyz position and then the last one index so based on that value we can copy paste into a text in blender and this is where we enter the, the other way the other method to do this so we have this list of data we just load it using using text in nodes in Spreadshop, and this one should give you the XYZ. So the XYZ comes in, and let's see if I if I update this and then turn it on, and give it a material. I think where is it? So I'm gonna create a box. I'm gonna give it a material. This material should have uh, object color. Uh, let's name this material properly. Oh, it's a material one. Okay, that's okay. That's correct. This one we're gonna reload. We're gonna reload this file. Parse fox. Okay, reload. So this should uh, generate something here. It's currently complaining text curve object has attribute has no attribute vertices text curve I wonder why it's talking about text curve let's delete everything else okay so I just update it this one let's hide it so this is the result I think from spiritual so this is the our cube we don't need So this guy actually comes from here and this comes uh, in color because I am actually using a uh, random color for each of the color. So I randomly generate the color for each of the voxel but they maintain the index number. If you want to have some kind of a rainbow color, you can of course do that simply by um, here using the divider. So the index 
value here coming out and I divide it by 256 so it's giving me a value like a normalized value between 0 and 1 and I'm using it for HSV um, hue saturation value and this will um, generate the color for us so based on this it will colorize our objects 450 voxel box and so this is what we get this is of course um, originally one of my uh, face monster here so I just gonna drop it here so this is uh, this is how it looks originally so like I said the palette the palette in uh, Magica Foxel is very, very cool. You can just easily change the palette and get different color. Would be cool if we, we can just, you know, kind of scramble the color or things like that, or pick the color and then change it. Uh, oh yeah, there you go. That's a, uh, you can do this. And can you pick up the color? Not sure. Uh, maybe in the in the new version of Magica Foxel, this one is a version zero, 0.98 there is a another version 0.99 I'm using this version because this one comes with a with a playback with a frame number you know uh, you can have animations so anyhow so there you go this is a like a couple of ways you can you can import a vox into blender like I said this is like a work in progress I'm and I'm really sharing uh, my methods to kind of import the vox uh, I'm mentioning like three ways to do it. So the first one is just a modified version from uh, Mr. Steinford uh, script for Cinema 40. This one will really just generate, if I run this again, it's gonna generate uh, the box for us. And wait a few seconds. So 450 of course, 450 objects. And, and you also need to worry about the rotation and things like that. So that's quite interesting. Uh, but I like to, like I said, I like to use nodes because uh, there's a lot of flexibility here with nodes. You can, you can like uh, change the X, Y, Z, for example, and get a different orientation. You can, you can do a lot and you can change the box with something else. And you can even like uh, scale the box, you know, very, very cool. Um, so like, random number and then plug in there you can start to see some kind of randomization for example I found this pretty cool so this is like you can do a lot more than just a voxel and I like this look I'm probably gonna take a screenshot so again Magica voxel and blender uh, uh, you if if you know how to blend, you know uh, you can bring in any kind of file format um, into Blender and then work on it. Um, of course, we need to worry about like things like emissions, things like that. Um, it's something else. It's a it's a lot of considerations if you think about Magica Foxel, the color palette, and then the material. For example, we can render this out like that. But let me see um, this yellow color, for example. If I if I if I use the emission, so this kind of thing, like you know, like a material like glass or glass or metal or emissions. This is something that I would like to translate into Blender as well, so that we can render it out using Cycle Render or even EV in the future. But yeah, this is quite interesting. Magica Foxel is kind of like a, a, a nice extension, I think, for, for Blender and back, back and forth. You either like generate something in, uh, in Blender and bring it into Magica Foxel. And Magica Foxel also have this console mode. This is something quite interesting, very, very special. Uh, if, you, if you actually like to dig down on this, you can uh, type some kind of script and it will run some kind of algorithm. I, I have not really looked at it uh, properly, but this is some of them, some of the, the script that you can run inside Magica Foxel. It's quite amazing. I, I didn't know this is actually possible. So you can actually type things like, like that. Oh, wait. So this one, XSPY2. So XSPY2 and then type a number. 
they didn't generate anything but I believe so the script this kind of script that you can basically call so this one x access grid with a color xs offset um let me try xs grid you can change noise maybe noise uh, xs noise a b xs noise so that's supposedly gener generating um uh, a new objects but anyhow uh this is like a hidden feature of magica fox sale i haven't not checked this but this uh, i don't know what language this is exactly but uh seems familiar this is very similar to shader some kind of shader that i think in blender uh, we actually have something like this inside cycles as osl so it's like osl shader so there's a lot there's a lot of Things we can study with the Magica Foxel if you want to get a technical event but I think if you're like a you know like a 3d artist as well it's always nice to work with just a Foxel and once you're happy with it you can you know bring it into blender and then uh, mix it up you, you can blend a lot of things in blender so there you go I'm gonna share this blend file with all this uh, with all this script uh, hopefully you can make sense of all of them but there you go uh, hopefully you find this useful. Thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Bye